Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we are talking about DDR4, specifically the anticipated switchover date from DDR3 to DDR4, in other words, the period of expected mass market adoption of the new memory platform. This is the discussion that was originally had during the DDR2 to DDR3 switchover days that would have been from the period of 2007 to 2010, that would be the launch area, uh, until the period at which DDR3 was massively consumed by even gamers, who are generally among the last adopters when considering the weight and demands of the enterprise and server market. So gamers, as many of us as there are out there, we are not a huge part of the market when it comes to new technology. It's always going to be the server companies that do things first, especially when you look at companies like Google and Cisco and all of these people who need very high-powered systems to sustain their daily operations. And they will make a switch to new hardware even for things like energy conservation even if the bandwidth remains the same because it can cut costs massively by uh, integrating this hardware across all of their many, many servers. And that brings us to a few of the key features for DDR4. DDR4 has energy consumption of about 35% lower than DDR3L and about 10% lower than DDR3. It's also got almost 100% more bandwidth than DDR3. And on the server side, there's significantly better error detection, better ECC, which maintains accuracy for a longer period of time, and it's not really something that we'll see used in gaming applications, but it is an important factor in DDR4. This does mean that the benefits for DDR4 are limited for gaming, because currently we're barely even using DDR3 beyond 1600 MHz in games. If you put a 2400 megahertz stick in, you put a 1600 megahertz stick in, you're not going to see huge gains in gaming performance. You will see gains in production environments like rendering and streaming and things like that, and live previews of Adobe After Effects, for example, but not really in gaming. Maybe in FP, maybe a frame per second at best, and that is within margin of error. But some games do make use of faster memory, like F1 2012, but we, we won't get into that here. The main reason DDR4 is immediately slowed to the market is because there's only one platform right now for consumers. It's just X99, that's it, and that is very expensive. So we're sort of waiting on Intel and AMD to introduce more platforms that are more reasonably priced for the rest of us that support DDR4, and those are coming soon. Actually, they are coming next year, 2015, and into 2016. Haswell EX will support DDR4, Broadwell E will support 4, Broadwell EP, and even Skylake will support either DDR3 or DDR4 depending on the uh, manufacturer and the type of Skylake platform being built. So the, the platforms are coming, they're on the way, and new platforms really aren't the only reason that DDR4 has slow uptake. It also comes to things like the semiconductor manufacturers, the suppliers. They're Kingston, Corsair, G-Skill, all these companies, they go to just three semiconductor producers in the industry. They have three people they can go to and order RAM modules for their sticks of RAM that you buy. So that means that there's going to be potentially a threat of an oligopoly where you have controlled prices, but that's that's always that is not new for the memory industry, put it that way. Uh, and we are waiting for these companies to switch over their fab process to 25 nanometer wafer fabrication. And that can take a while because they're currently uh, producing memory for DDR3, DDR4. They're producing memory for phones, for tablets, for laptops, which now take different types of memory than desktops. They have lower voltage memory, making it for desktops, of course. And this is not, these factors didn't necessarily exist from DDR2 to 3 because a lot of these devices weren't really being consumed on such a huge scale as they are today, especially phones, which are eating into a lot of the wafer production and, and fabrication of these memory dyes, these memory modules. So that is definitely delaying the uptake on DDR4. Now to answer the question of the video, when will DDR3 switch over to DDR4 en masse for even those of us just gaming? It is looking like that'll happen in 2016. That can change, obviously, depending on how the three suppliers end up doing with their 
uh, their supply and demand, and if they have shortages, or if they try to control things a bit more than they should and get greedy. But it's looking like 2016, and we've spoken to a few memory manufacturers about this, and they all seem to agree that sometime in the 2015 to 2017 range, there will be a switch over on mass for consumers, including and especially gamers. So that is it for this video. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. It helps a lot in keeping the channel going. We're doing really well lately, and I appreciate all of your support. Please leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or questions for other articles, and I will see you all next time. Peace.